Hi there, I'm Larry Karaszewski, and here at our website we spotlight a lot of great films and unsung gems, uh, but our name is Trailers from Hell, and every once in a while I think it's important uh, to remind people of the from hell portion of our mission statement. Uh, the movie I've chosen to spotlight today has a horrible reputation. It's the Red Fox gay-themed Norman. Is that you? Uh, I always say don't trust a film with weird punctuation in its title, and this has a question mark and ellipsis, so uh, really watch out. Uh, this motion picture is notable in the history of cinema because it was one of the first movies ever shot on videotape and transferred to 35mm film to be released in theaters. A few other projects tried that, uh, Frank Zappa's 200 Motels and uh, crazy producer Bill Sargent's Electronavision experiments of taking stage shows and bringing them to movie theaters, stuff like Give Em Hell Harry and Richard Burton's Hamlet. Uh, Norman Is At You was also based on a stage play. It ran a whole 12 performances on Broadway before it closed. Um, I wonder why that didn't scare anyone away from making the film. Uh, actually, I take it back because it did scare one person, uh, Billy Wilder, who was apparently circling the project at one point for Walter Matthau to play the father. Now that would have been an interesting film. I believe the original stage production had uh, uh, Lou Jacoby in the leading role. It was written as a Jewish family that finds out their son is gay. Uh, the play bombed in New York, but later found success in France where the farcical elements uh, were much more appreciated. Um, but it was a West Coast uh, L.A. production uh, with Good Times star John Amos that he took over the part and it gave TV producer George Slaughter uh, the idea to cast a movie with a black star. Uh, Slaughter's one of the kings of television. You know, Ronan Martin's Laugh-In was his. And almost every big star variety special of the 70s, you know, Goldie, Liza, Sammy Davis Jr., Dinah Shore, uh, he was their go-to guy. This is the only feature he directed. Um, his television expertise is probably one of the reasons it was shot on video, but according to Slaughter, the main rationale for shooting on tape was Red Fox. Red was used to working uh, with the three-camera sitcom format uh, for Sanford and Son, and uh, reportedly Fox also was stoned all the time and had a horrible reputation for showing up, say, at noon for an 8 a.m. call. So video allowed them to be on Red's schedule and still get coverage. Uh, Red also never quite learned his lines, so they had cue cards and dialogue written on the back of props to help him out, but heck, uh, Marlon Brando did that too. So this is not at all to knock Red Fox. The man is a comic genius, and he is what makes this movie still worth watching. So let's take a look from 1976. Norman, dot, dot, dot. Is that you, question mark? This man is one of America's most popular stars. For years, he's been a nightclub star a record star, a TV star, and now he's a movie star. Red Fox is one of the funniest men who ever lived. He invented the comedy album. His timing is impeccable. Red's on-screen delivery saves so many questionable jokes in this project. Written by Mel Brooks' writing partner Ron Clark and Saved by the Bell creator Sam Bobrick, the film does deliver the laughs. Rewatching the movie, I was expecting it to be a lot more politically incorrect and offensive, which it is, no doubt about it. I mean, Red's always trying to beat up someone or getting a hooker to turn his son straight. But the film also has a sweetness and a generosity of spirit. There were a number of gay movies around this time, all oddly based on stage shows. The Ritz, Boys in the Band. It's as if a gay idea needed the blessing of another medium to get Hollywood to pay attention. Norman still feels like a play or, or a sitcom, uh, barely opened up for film. Occasionally, Red will walk to the elevator or go to a store. I mean, heck, they still have him breaking the fourth wall to address the audience. So no one worked too hard to rethink the material. They don't really adapt anything, even when it comes to changing the leads from Jewish to black. Race is never brought up, never a factor, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, Red Fox finds out his son is sleeping with swishy Caucasian Dennis Dugan and never once blames the white man. Dugan, the future director of my first film, Problem Child, is playing one of the gayest stereotypes in the history of cinema. He's practically Bruno, prancing around the house, talking about cooking prune flambe surprise. Uh, also upping the gay content is a supporting role that Schlatter changed in order to introduce to the world puppeteer Waylon Flowers and Madame. The movie just stops cold for 10 minutes so you can watch Flowers' nightclub act. The writers hated this. And I'd say the only time Red Fox doesn't seem natural in his performance is when he's forced to laugh at Waylon Flowers. 
Now the rest of the cast is just okay. Pearl Bailey is top build, but she doesn't show up until the last half hour. Cleopatra Jones herself, Tamara Dobson is the hooker. Mad Magazine artist Sergio Aragones plays a Mexican desk clerk in a sequence that makes the film as offensive to Latinos as it is to gays. And basketball sensation and future Hill Street Blues star Michael Warren plays the title role of Norman as a nice bland guy, which actually was kind of a brave choice at the time. Now today, this movie's kind of forgotten, but it was a fairly big hit. Believe it or not, it opened at number one at the box office the week it was released. It's available via Warner Archive, and it's the kind of thing they do so well, resurrecting a project with an obviously limited fan base, but still fascinating and worth checking out. They deserve each other. Norman, is that you? 